Hello guys, welcome to Nooses Club. Um, we're back at it again with another video. Today, it's going to be another keyboard. Um, specifically a budget keyboard today, and we are changing up the video kind of style. I think for the past few videos, we've been doing the text style, mainly just because my voiceovers have been really crap and just because my scripts suck. So I guess we're just gonna try to do it free flowing today. Um, but yeah, today we'll be reviewing and modding the Keycon K12. So the Keycon K12 is a budget 60% keyboard, um, and it's got an aluminum top case, which is supposedly it's going to give you the um, premium experience as Keycon advertised. But in my opinion, I believe it's a terrible keyboard. And yes, although it's $70, and yes, it's ready to use out of the box, in my opinion, it's just too hollow and it just sounds really bad. Like, literally, listen to this. Uh, I mean, I won't lie, the unboxing experience wasn't too bad. Um, you know, out of the box, you do get the user manual as usual. You get the right angled type C cable because the freaking layout is terrible. And then you've also got the um, USB type C to USB A adapter because it is only USB C on both ends. Um, other than that, you got your switch and keycap pullers. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's it's that's about it really they don't even provide you an Ellen key for um, actually taking apart the keyboard because there's two separate screw heads that you need in order to actually mod this keyboard other than that the marketing isn't too bad actually as well um, you know Keychron does provide you that with that aluminum top case and that's probably why it's so popular but on top of that you do get the Bluetooth capability uh, meaning it's got a battery inside but unfortunately if you do want to run this wireless and you want to have RGB do expect to plug it in quite often um, it's just something that I don't really like doing and to be honest I do like my cold cable I mean <laughs> I think you've seen from my videos my cold cable is getting scuffed so I do need to buy a new one and it isn't even an aviator but you know like it's just the coiled cable that I've been using for a while now so it's like I don't really care at this rate using the right angle and plus I won't even be using this keyboard that often um, anyway if you are new to mechanical keyboards and you're having a hard time picking out your switches I recommend trying not to go with the tactiles on the k12 and that's mainly because it comes with Gateron Browns and those are terrible like it will really mess with your perception on what tactility is and with that being said, this has very little to no um, tactility at all. And although it might be a biased take, considering like I've only like have like two other tactile switches that I've tested, one being the uh, Jelly Blues and the Boba U4Ts, I'd suggest if you are planning on uh, switching the switches, I'd recommend the budget friendly and very entry level tactility experience. Uh, Jelly Blues from Akko. And I did do a review on these switches on the um, video that I've uploaded a while back in, on reincarnating my MK750. And it's one here right next to it right now. You can't really see it. It's probably blurred because the focus is terrible. But essentially, um, I recreated my keyboard that had Cherry Browns, which are also terrible. Don't ever use Cherry Browns if you're literally going <laughs> to change the hot swap switches. Like... If Gatoron Browns are bad, Cherry Browns are bad. Like even if you lube them, like literally they're just bad. So uh, if, if you don't want to spend too much, just buy some stock Jelly Blues. Don't even worry about lubing them. They, they, they sound pretty good in general. And yeah, like I said, I don't have enough experience in the keyboard air, um, area, but I do know enough that Cherry Browns and Gatoron Browns have terrible tactility. 
period. Anyway, in regards to taking apart the keyboard, it's relatively easy. Like I said, they don't really provide you with the tools to actually uh, take the screws apart. But what you will need is some sort of like hex head or hexagonal head screwdriver that you'll have to take apart. On the side, there'll be four different screws. They're the same, sorry. They're just four screws that you take out. Um, and then they kind of just slide out the, uh, at least the top and the bottom, uh, long pieces of aluminum. So you slide them out. Um, and then from there, you'll have some Phillips head uh, screws. There'll be about seven of them that you'll need to take out. So you need two screw heads in, um, in total. Uh, and you take them out off the top of the case. But before you do that, you need to take out the keycaps and the switches. Well, you don't need to take out the switches. You can just take out the keycaps and then um, and then unscrew those screws. I did go ahead and take off those Gator on Browns and I didn't throw them in the bin because for some reason I love hoarding keyboard parts that I don't even use. Um, I, I even hoard the freaking keycaps for for fuck's sake like those keycaps are dog shit and we are going to change them up for some nice uh, cement gray keycaps from kbd fans unfortunately it's not the same exact match as the cement gray pbt um japanese dice sub uh keycaps from their website and that's because i did buy my tofu 65 which is right here that is fully assembled with the gator on yellows and um, the cement gray keycaps and I did buy it from their AliExpress store meaning I for some reason I don't know why but I think they they used probably clones because for some reason I couldn't find uh, this specific keycap set in their website aside from that Japanese um, die sub but regardless of that um, I think it's a really nice change from the keycaps that Keycon provide with it. So I did change it to those. Um, in terms of switches, I did swap them out for the Gatoron Oil Kings, which I did bag lube the springs with Crytox 105 GPL, and then just lube the switches with um, Crytox 205 Grade Zero. So once I have taken apart the um, keyboard, or, or sorry, the, the screws, uh, you can actually take out the, uh, the PCB and the plate just from the bottom of the case. And there will be a battery attached to the PCB. You'll just have to detach that. Um, but yeah, it's only basically about 11 screws that you need to take out. And then two more um, from the PCB joining to the plate. But for some reason, Keycon manufacturers tighten the hell out of those screws that I couldn't couldn't take them out and in fact my screw head threaded them and I literally couldn't take it out and it was just wobbly so I ended up just scrapping the PE sheet mod I was gonna do so that was the reason why I wanted to take out the PCB from the plate and it was purely only because I wanted to do the PE sheet mod which will help with poppiness and just general like creaminess I guess the sound profile I don't know how you describe that but it, it's really nice and I've done it to a few of my boards uh, but with that being said, I also had to scrap the idea of tuning the stabilizers myself. In that sound test, you heard how bad the stabilizers were. Well, guess what? They're going to be just as bad in this next sound test because I could not um, lube them. I, I didn't have a syringe to inject any like dielectric grease or anything. And to be honest, like I said, this is a B-Tech as a video. And I couldn't care less about <laughs> like modding this. I just wanted to look nice and make a video for you guys. Uh, to continue on with the mods, uh, scrapping the PE sheet mod and the stabilizers I ended up just putting on case foam at the bottom of the case and tape modding the PCB but before you do any tape mods I would recommend that you take out that battery because it is a fire hazard I almost set my house on fire taking it out so be careful if you are doing the tape mod with a K12 and you need to take out the battery find a different way because I scuffed it out like literally just look at this clip Okay, I just, uh oh. Oh my god, I almost just started a fucking fire, dude. It's really messed up. Anyway, once the battery was taken out, I took out some, like, the the packing foam that came with the keycaps from my Tofu 65 box, and then I put two of them inside the actual bottom of the case because it is quite hollow. I would have wanted to perform the coin mod to reduce hollowness and make it more whole but like i said i'm so broke i can't even buy pennies anymore <laughs> but anyway after that i put the um i put the pcb back in the case um and i had to try and align the pcb switches from the actual switches or levers on 
the um, side here, if you can see. I had to align them with that so they, they can still function. Realistically, I won't even use that Bluetooth feature, but just purely that Windows or Mac OS thing. Um, other than that, I've also then put in the screws again. Then I took out my Get On Oil Kings that I've lubed myself, put them on, and then the keycaps. And then this is the result. Um, yeah, there's nothing much I can say. Really, I haven't upgraded too much but in terms of the sound difference just listen to this and disregard the stabilizers please god damn they're terrible keep on come on boys come on keep on what the fudge bro Anyway, like I said, this is a B-Tech as video. There's nothing more I can say about this keyboard, but aside from that, it is terrible, and you should just buy, like, the CIY um, LK60, fuck, the CIY GAS67 that I have behind here. I made a video on that, my first mechanical keyboard that I built, and then the next one, the next budget uh, keyboard that I built is the LK67, which is also very good. They sound very good, and they also feel very good. So watch those videos instead. I think they're both gasket mounted, or actually this one's uh, top mounted, but even then, it still sounds very good. I mean, this sounds extremely good. I'll be honest, it sounds good, like I've mentioned already. You heard the sound test. And it's got just natural thoughts from that Gator and Oral Kings. But other than that, there's nothing else I could really recommend about it. I think it's just, to be honest, it's biased take. But I guess it was just the experience just taking it apart and taking out that battery. It was just so stressful that, like, I just didn't enjoy it. Like I said, it's relatively easy. It's read readily available if you want to go and buy it. And if you don't want to do any mods to it, then so be it. You don't have to. But then in the future, if you do, at least the option is there. So that's the plus side that I could... Um, bring upon the k12 anyway that's enough babbling for today hopefully you guys enjoyed that video and yeah like subscribe share the video um and like i said i stream stream on twitch support me there i'm gonna be trying to get that up and running as well um yeah i'm sweating i'm out of here see you guys in the next video peace